Hello everyone, welcome to an introduction to WordPress. This series of videos has got something for everyone, from beginner to intermediate to advanced users. If you're a beginner, or someone who doesn't want to write code, you will learn the fundamentals of using the WordPress backend to create pages, posts, navigation menus, adjust basic settings, and then you can combine that later with pre-existing themes and plugins to create your own websites. However, for our intermediate to advanced users, we're going to roll up our sleeves and learn how to create a theme from scratch, which means we're going to begin with zero files, zero lines of code, and we're going to write everything together so you can really learn how to bend WordPress to your will and get it to do whatever you need it to do. Now before we get started, let's spend about a minute to review what WordPress is and why we're so excited to be using it. So what is WordPress? Well, WordPress is a free, open source, web publishing system, which is just another way of saying it's a free tool to help you build websites. So who uses WordPress? Perhaps you've heard that it's used by small businesses or for personal blogs, but it's also used by governments, schools, nonprofits, and Fortune 500 companies which means WordPress is for everyone. It doesn't matter who you are or what you're trying to achieve with your website, there's a good chance that WordPress can help you. Now, not only can WordPress help you, but the community surrounding WordPress can also help you, and it is a massive community. Somewhere between 17 to almost 20% of all websites on the internet are powered by WordPress. That's almost one in five. Now, I can explain later why that's an amazing statistic that we should all be excited about and that we all benefit from, but for now, just know that a lot of people use WordPress. And finally, the greatest strength of WordPress, at least in my opinion, is the attitude surrounding it. There's a very can-do, self-empowered, helpful, let's keep things simple, but remember that we can achieve anything attitude uh, attached to WordPress, and I absolutely love it. So in this series of videos, I want to share some of that love for WordPress with you and get you started. So let's dive right in. In front of you is the WordPress dashboard. You'll also hear this referred to as the WordPress admin or the WordPress backend. You can think of this as home base. This is where you administer your website. This is where you create posts and pages and so on and so forth. Now, it's important to point out that the general public, the people that view your website, cannot and will not see this back end or this dashboard. Only you, as the site owner or site content contributor, will see this. So if you imagine it's the year 1950 and we're running a newspaper, the general public doesn't see the printing press or the offices where your journalists work. They only see the front-facing newspaper. So in this case, the public only sees our website, the way that we construct it, whereas this WordPress back end this looks relatively the same for all WordPress websites, and it's where the content creators work to add content to the website and administer the website. And I think that'll make more sense here in just a moment. So for example, if we click Posts in the left-hand menu, we see a list of news post titles. So this one reads, How to Assess Website Analytics. This one is titled, Tutorial Demo Files Posted. And you can tell right away that this is not how a public-facing website would be laid out. This is not interesting or captivating in any way. This is only for the site owners and content contributors. So these are the existing posts on the website. So we can click on one if we want to begin to edit it. And then this is very similar to a word processing program. Uh, we can bold certain text, make it italic. Uh, we can add new text. And then when we're done, uh, we can simply click this update or save button. And we just saved uh, an update to a post. So that's how simple it is to edit existing content with WordPress. Now let's take a look at how easy it is to create new content altogether. So if we go back to the post screen, we can see a list of our existing items. If we click this add new button, uh, we can simply provide a title new example post and then you just add in a bit of content in the body section add a bit of uh, Latin dummy text you can
can choose a category if you'd like. So we can choose between article or news, or we can even add a new category just for organizational purposes. Uh, let's call this news. And then just click this blue publish button. And that's it. We just saved a new article and it would now show up on our front facing website. And that's really the heart and soul of the WordPress back end. You can edit existing content and create new content. Now there are different types of content. So for example, we were dealing with posts. However, let's take a very quick look at pages. The best way to describe pages is to simply contrast them with posts because the two are very similar but there's a key difference. So let's say for example we ran a blog or a news based website. Most of our content would live within posts because we want this constant stream of content flowing through our website. However, we still might have a few static pillars in our website like an about us page or our history page or contact us page. Now when I just used the word static to describe pages, that doesn't mean that they're locked in place or that you can't edit them. So for example, if we click on About Us, we can edit this page. We can make this text bold, we can add new paragraphs, and then click the Update button. So the content isn't fixed in the sense that it can't be changed. Uh, it's a bit more subtle than that. What we really mean is that posts are usually displayed in reverse chronological order, so the newest posts are at the top, if you think of a news website. But pages aren't really part of a stream or river of content. They're sort of independent, timeless in a way, and that's what we mean when we say fixed or static. Uh, but aside from that, you can see that pages and posts are nearly identical. You provide a title and then a bit of content, you can update and save them. Now posts and pages are really the heart and soul of WordPress, so in a sense, you've already just learned how to use WordPress. It's that simple. But you might be thinking, okay, so there's posts and pages, is that it? Is that all WordPress is? And if it is, why is WordPress so insanely popular? Why do people make such a big fuss over it? So to address those questions or that series of concerns, I will say this. Yes, the core of WordPress really is that simple, but the core is also very powerful and very easy to extend and customize. So for example, out of the box, WordPress only comes with posts and pages, so you can have a news section and then a few static pages. But what if you wanted a completely separate part of your website to have recipes, so dinners, desserts, meal ideas? Well, you can see in the sidebar that I've created a custom post type named Recipes. And that if I click that, we've got all this entirely different content here. Beef stew, feta chicken salad, blackberry pie, potato salad, chocolate cake. Uh, and you can see that we can even use different categories or different taxonomy systems. We can categorize the meals as chicken or dessert, dinner. Uh, and these categories are entirely separate from the categories that we use for the news or blog section of our website. And if we click on one, so if I click on potato salad, you can see that it looks just like a post or a page, so you can add content. Oh, here's where the ingredients go, here's where the instructions go. Uh, but it would be very easy to adjust some of the settings in WordPress so that when you're editing a recipe, there's also another field down here that says recipe rating, and you can choose between one to five stars. And then there could be another field called uh, recommendation and we would say whether we actually recommend this recipe or not. So the point is is that you could have any number of fields in addition to just this main body text field and you can have those fields only display for certain content types. Which means WordPress isn't limited to just posts and pages. Yes that's what it starts with out of the box but WordPress is only limited by your imagination. We could create other custom content types in addition to recipes. We could create restaurant reviews, photo galleries, slideshows, chef's corner with interviews, uh, whatever your imagination can think of, you can really extend and customize WordPress to help you keep it organized, dynamic, uh, and easily accessible to the public. Now this first lesson or video that you're currently watching is just to whet your appetite. We didn't really get our hands dirty and learn any of the details yet. I do want to say though, I purposely did not show you the front facing website. So if you remember, we discussed that only the admin or the site owner sees this dashboard, uh, whereas the public sees something different. They see the actual website. 
Now, the reason I didn't show you what the website looks like is because I don't want you to have any preconceived notions of what a, quote, WordPress website looks like. Uh, there's a lot of people that think that all WordPress websites look the same or that they have some cookie cutter formula, but I'm here to tell you that they don't need to be that way and that largely they're not that way. WordPress does not place any restrictions on how your website should look. The only reason some WordPress websites feel cookie cutter or maybe they look the same is because a certain theme has become very popular. A theme is what controls the public facing portion of your website. It's what your audience sees. So again, you as the admin, you see the dashboard when you're editing your website and the public sees what the theme outputs. So the theme says, okay, on the homepage there should be five news posts, then there should be five recipes and three restaurant reviews, and it should use these colors and these background images, and this is how it should look and function. That's the role of the theme. Now remember earlier when we said that the WordPress community was huge? It is, and it's also filled with people who share their work. So imagine if someone who's a developer created a really useful theme, and then half a million or a million people started using that theme. Well, at that point, you can start to understand why some people might say WordPress websites look cookie cutter uh, because they've seen thousands or even millions of websites using the exact same theme. But I'm here to remind you that it's up to each site owner to choose what their website looks like and how it functions. It's not WordPress's fault that certain themes become incredibly popular. <laughs> and it's actually helpful to move beyond themes and look at WordPress as more of a tool. Uh, WordPress is really just a tool that stores information in a database for you, that makes that data easy to manipulate, easy to query, easy to present to the public, and you can leverage your own HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP code to output whatever you want to output. Now the beautiful part is that there's no right or wrong way to put together a WordPress website. If you want to use a free theme, you can. If you want to buy a premium theme, you can. If you want to design and craft and code your own theme from scratch, you can. Uh, there's no right or wrong way. Uh, and that's what makes WordPress so unbelievably amazing, is that it's this huge community of people all using the same platform, but they all use it in their own different way, and they share advice and resources and tips and tutorials. Now, this video series is basically just me sharing the info that I feel is the most useful. Uh, now, whether you're a beginner or intermediate or advanced user, we're going to be looking at all of the different WordPress admin screens and settings. And we're also going to look at how these different WordPress modules tie into theme output. So whether you want to use a pre-existing theme or whether you want to code your own theme from absolute scratch, we're going to take a look at all of the factors at play. So thank you very much for watching this introductory video, and I'll see you in future lessons very soon. Thanks. Bye.